In the aftermath of a deadly spate of gun violence this past weekend, most likely the knock-on effect of Gerald Shani Tillett's murder in Dangrig on Saturday, the Belize Police Department is on high alert. That heightened state of readiness remains in effect through to his funeral on a date that is yet to be announced. Meanwhile, Tillett's alleged hitman, later learned to be Nicolas Suazo, is listed in stable condition after being shot in the back during the savage attack on Wadani Shed. He is the fourth person to have been rushed for medical treatment at the Southern Regional Hospital on the night in question. Minutes later, um, and a fourth person arrived at the hospital, identified as Nicolas Suazo, with two gunshot wounds in the back. Um, that was the upper right side of the back and the left lower back. Initial investigations revealed that um, Gerald Tillett, along with Carlos Sharp and David Rodriguez, were at the Wadani Shed socializing with, with others. When um, one person, a lone gunman, if you want to call it that, walked up to them, to where to the table where Gerald Tillett was, and along with the other two um, injured persons, and he pointed a handgun in their direction and opened fire. As many as five shots were fired at point blank range in the direction of the seated men multiple rounds finding their target on various parts of their upper bodies. When I saw the gun, the man came in full black. I thought he was going to purchase something and just leave. Didn't know he was coming to murder anyone. It just seemed so normal. Music was playing. There was gambling, a little dice, domino, usual. So it was so frightening. By all accounts, it was in fact a normal evening a calm that was shattered by the report of gunfire. The urgency with which Dangriga police responded to the scene of the shooting has been called to question by residents in the vicinity of the establishment. Well, we call police, I literally call the police. The police, they take like half an hour before they come. But within that time, the young man sharpie the ball for help and the next young man, they bleed, bleed on the ground. So the people around here who have vehicle, they gather up and they take um, sharp and shiny, they carry it out in the hospital. Tell us a bit about the police response. I know, as you mentioned, you guys went to the assistance of the injured men. In terms of the police responding to the scene after the shooting, what was that like? It was like half an hour to five, five minutes the police came. Because about four people called the police and they took long. When they came, the two men have already went to the hospital. While both witnesses, interviewed separately and in confidence, gave similar versions of sluggish police response, Assistant Superintendent Mark Stevens vehemently denies that claim. I categorically re rebuke that because that is so untrue and misleading. That was never the case. Police did not respond in slow because that incident occurred about around 7.10 and before, long before 7.18, right? I think it was more about around 7.15 that the police contacted me and told me that they were on the scene and they had the scene secured. So that person is a mischief maker. Despite the fact that police may have indeed been slow to respond, there was little that could have been done to save the life of the George Street boss. At 11 p.m., approximately four hours after the fatal attack, Shiny was pronounced dead at the Western Regional Hospital. Back in Dangriga, police moved immediately to effect a lockdown in anticipation of a reprisal. We got other police who were off duty to come out and work, and at the same time communicating with um, or my counterparts from Belmopan and Belize City, because of the personalities involved, you know, it was obvious that they would have been a, a spell off. Um, there were communications with personnel from our national headquarters, too, and um, they made arrangements for additional support sent down here. Um, we were able to put up um, checkpoints just outside of Dangriga with assistance from 
Belmapan police and um, with additional support with in terms of patrolling efforts because um, we had to from the from the onset lock down um, Southern Regional Hospital because um, the magnitude of the amount of people that was at that location and the need for access people with legitimate medical reasons wanting to reach that location, you know. Um, so um, that had to be catered for. Among those persons with legitimate medical reasons was Nicolas Suazo. Only his account of how he was shot twice to the back did not check out. That story, as News 5 has been reliably informed, has changed twice since Suazo was admitted for treatment. To add insult to injury, the alleged shooter arrived at the Southern Regional Hospital bleeding from gunshot wounds. The shirt he was wearing at the time of the admission, however, did not have any bullet holes. We are conducting our investigations and um, we're pretty much um, confident that at the end of the day, Nicolas Suazo will be charged for murder and two counts of attempted murder. Reporting for News 5, I am Isani Caetano.